crazy how far back this goes. I mean, there are still thousands of people coming in. It's a massive march, and you know, as journalists, we tend to stay near the front to cover the politicians and the diplomats and the dignitaries, but it's just incredible how many young people are here. Yeah, tell me some of the emotions that you feel when you're touring Auschwitz or when you're marching on the train tracks that led Jews from Auschwitz to Birkenau. You know, you feel a, a profound sense of loss when you think about how many people came through here and all the different places they came from and they were reduced to nothing and dehumanized, uh, made parts of a machine process of death. It's, it's just unfathomable, actually. It's very difficult to understand, and it's, and it's very sad. Uh, but then you see the young groups singing and uh, chanting and meeting each other and making new friends, and, and you realize this is, this is actually not the site of a defeat. I mean, uh, this is obviously a, a, a terrible place where terrible things happened, but the fact that we're here uh, makes this the site of a tremendous victory. And I think that's always the feeling one comes away with here, at least it's the same feeling I had last year. Uh, someone asked me for a photograph here last year and, and I tried to find one to give them. And I was smiling in the few photographs I had and, they, and it was just bizarre, they said, how are you smiling at this death camp? And I tried to explain to them that when you're at the end of this march and you're with the, the youth groups and you're with people from all over the world and survivors who are coming back, the message you take with you is that I'm Israel Chai, and that's, it's not a it's, it's, it's a, it's a feeling of profound uh, comfort, I think. It's, it's and uh, one of the themes of this year's march is say no to anti-Semitism. We've had a uh, just continued increase in acts of anti-Semitism, including violent anti-Semitism over the last year or two years. Um, wh how, do you, how do you react to that after participating in a march like this where you saw how anti-Semitism can manifest itself in its worst form? Well, I have a bit of an iconoclastic view about this. Uh, look, if you say no to anti-Semitism is, if I can be frank, it's, it's not really a good slogan. It builds off the say no to drugs slogan. And that slogan was effective but it addressed an issue or a, a temptation that is something many people will face. Anti-Semitism is not something that we should treat like an indulgence, something people have to resist, a temptation. It has to be addressed as something evil. And the people you're talking to when you try to persuade them not to be anti-Semitic probably are already on your side. Anti-Semitism is a fringe phenomenon. It's dangerous because of the means that people have on the fringe to spread their ideas, to carry out violent attacks, but it's still a fringe phenomenon and my personal view is uh, the next person who comes into a synagogue to carry out some act of violence should be shot. I mean I, I think that the message Jews need to take is that we need to arm ourselves. In the United States we have a second amendment, we should use it. And where it is restricted by local or state laws we should fight those laws, we should resist those laws, we should file lawsuits against those laws because they violate the Second Amendment. We need to be able to exercise our rights. And I guarantee you that if people knew that there were armed congregants inside synagogues, synagogue attacks would stop. Already I think they're going to stop because of the heroic resistance that was shown by the people in the Poe California synagogue and the Chabad synagogue all of the stories of the heroic self-sacrifice, the heroic fight that people put up against the attacker, J just tremendous, tremendous courage. Armed or unarmed, I think people are going to start to fight back in that way, but I do think that we have a Second Amendment, we have to use it. And so, I think the message has to be not to say no to hate, but to fight anti-Semitism, actually to fight it, uh, through force if necessary. We have legal means to use force to defend ourselves, and we should fight for the right to do so. I also think that a message that needs to come out, and, and, and you see it here, but a message that people need to take with them is support the State of Israel. Keep the State of Israel strong. Keep it secure. 
The state of Israel is the single greatest guarantor of the safety and endurance of the Jewish people. And, and so I think the message needs to be more focused. It needs to be the Jews need to be able to defend themselves, whether individually, as in the United States, or collectively, as in Israel. I, th I think this comes down to our ability to resist violence with violence if necessary. I think that's more convincing than trying to persuade the unpersuadable fanatics who linger on the fringes of media and society. And uh, one final note, I think the best way also to resist anti-Semitism is to do things like this, to be Jewish, to put on tefillin, as the uh, young Bokrim over there are encouraging people to do, but uh, light Shabbat candles, do things that are... Um, Strengthen Jewish identity. Yeah, it's, it's more than identity, just, just, just bring, bring Jewishness into the world, because they tried to crush it here, and uh, they failed. But they, they will continue uh, to, to test that, and, and the challenge is, is every day. Um, it, you know, pe people ought to be Jewish. It, it's not just an issue of a demographic number. It's a question of the quality of Jewish life we have. So I think those things, you know, defend Jewish life physically and, and keep promoting it in terms of what we do. And I think you've heard those messages at this conference. Say no to anti-Semitism. Say yes to being Jewish. Say, say yes to fighting back. Say yes to the Second Amendment if you're an American citizen like I happen to be, fortunately. And I, I think that's the message.